Stately homes of England, how beautiful they stand To prove the upper classes have still the upper hand Though the fact that they have to be rebuilt And frequently mortgaged to the hilt Is inclined to take the guilt Off the gingerbread and certainly damps the fun Of the eldest son In the halcyon days, before the COVID-19 and woke viruses infected our body politic, I held the view that the statue of my ancestor, Oliver Cromwell, should not be standing outside the Mother of Parliaments. The simple fact is that it was offensive to my political sensibilities that an effigy of a regicide and autocrat who'd ruled England undemocratically as Lord Protector from 1653 to 1658 should be placed in such a location. That was then. This, however, is the new reality. Ill-informed tokenism that seeks to atone for the darker pages of our history by mindless vandalism of its monuments. You doubt me? Well, consider the next slide. This is the plinth of the statue of Major General Charles Gordon after the recent protests. Did any one of the idiots who vandalised this monument on London's embankment know that Gordon was the man who in 1877 virtually single-handed suppressed the Afro-Arab slave trade in East Africa and in 1885 gave his life at Khartoum, not in the British interest, but in defence of the native Christian Sudanese? I think not. And what has been the response of our lords and masters to the woke calls to dismantle our heritage? To set up learned committees at the taxpayer's expense to consider whether or not certain monuments should be allowed to stand. Well, I'm going to save them the trouble and show you what should go and why. For a start, there should be a clean sweep of all war memorials, starting with the cenotaph and of course not forgetting the tomb of the unknown warrior. These are all celebrations of war and deeply offensive to pacifists, let alone the nation's former enemies. And whilst we're about it, that statue of Bodicea should also be removed, as it must be psychologically damaging to Italian visitors to London, should they ever return, whose ancestors she slaughtered by the Legion. Next, we should remove the statues of all our kings and queens, as they are an offence to the Republicans in our midst. Charles I, on the left, asserted that he ruled by divine right, which probably still upsets the Low Church Brigade, and George IV, that's him in the middle, was simply awful to his wife, which must offend the feminist lobby. And don't forget the recently erected statue of the Queen Mother. Surely not the lovely old Queen Mum, I hear you say, but there must be no exceptions. She was Empress of India, and we know what happened there. And when the monarchs go, so too should the politicians, as every single one of them, no matter how apparently virtuous they were, had skeletons in their cupboards, besides being deeply repugnant to their opponents. So goodbye philandering Lloyd George, bisexual Disraeli and ex-soldier Major Attlee, to name just three of the dozens who befoul our city centres. And let's also get rid of Jan Smuts. He was a Boer, and so must have been a white supremacist, as was, so it's alleged, Churchill, Cecil Rhodes, and Nancy Astor. Speaking of whom, the American Lady Astor may have been the first woman MP to take her seat in the Commons, but she also thought that the Nazis were a thoroughly good thing, was deeply anti-Semitic, anti-Catholic, a feminist, and a teetotaler. So she offends a whole myriad of interest groups. The chances of saving her statue are therefore absolutely nil. Whilst on the subject of religious intolerance and not forgetting historical persecutions, we'd better remove every place of religious worship, no matter what the faith, for they all have dark pasts and stand as monuments to intolerance, oppression, torture, never forget the Inquisition, slavery, and God only knows what else. As for the hundreds of statues of past military, naval and air commanders, they've all got to go. To take just three, Nelson was an adulterer, as was Wellington, and Monty was a paedophile. Besides which, if that's not enough to ensure their removal, they were all mass murderers. 
like Bomber Harris in the right-hand corner of this slide. Of course, the monuments to our explorers must also go from James Cook to Scott of the Antarctic. They undoubtedly brought untold misery to many native populations now represented in the UK, who would rather not have been discovered, to say nothing of the damage they've done to the environment by opening up the planet. Shame on the lot of them, as Greta Thunberg might have said. In fact, by the time we're done, and I haven't even touched on the city centres, museums, stately homes and sheltered housing that were built with the ill-gotten gains from slavery, child labour, imperial trade, alcohol, tobacco, coal and so on, all that would be left is statues of animals such as Greyfriars Bobby in Edinburgh, providing that is that cat lovers don't insist on his removal on the grounds that, as a dog, he undoubtedly made Moggy's lives a misery. If that is the case, then here's what we can all look forward to. OK, OK, I know it's Berlin 1945, but you get the picture, which represents in more ways than one the law of unintended consequences. And that's a law wholly unknown to the woke community along, so it seems, with the laws relating to vandalism. Still we won't be beaten, we'll scrimp and screw and save. The playing fields of Eton have made us frightfully brave. And though if the Van Dykes have to go and we pawn the Beckstein brand, we'll stand by the stately homes of England.